We shared a car that's most jolly long homo Alright, so look, today, we're gonna talk today, and I gotta get back into the routine of um, basically talking to you guys so you guys know what's going on in the Hobo Depot and what's going on in the world today of bases. Alright, so I inquired this base um, last week, um, and it had been in a water situation. So, when you leave your base in the basements and stuff like that, and you get a tendency, you know, the basement floods, and then you get this thing happening with the water and the neck thing. And a lot of times the body will survive, and electronics will survive, and most of the metal will survive. But that neck is a meanie. That neck is a meanie. So the neck won't survive, uh, especially if it's underwater for a while. Normally, when I get bases in a Hobo Depot and they've been on the water, my first thing is, let me look at the neck. And man, oh man. So I got this base, and I've been working on it for like almost a week now. And the scary thing about it is, I keep getting laughed at by my boy back here, Hootie. What you laughing at, mate? Now he ain't saying nothing. He ain't saying nothing now. But anyway, I've been trying all kinds of uh, tricks that I do in my Hobo Depot to bring the neck back. And I actually got it where it was planned. When the neck came in, it was looped. When I tell you looped, I mean it was two and a half inches. This is two and a half inches um, from the board. The strings were two and a half inches from the board. That's two and a half inches. It would loop that much. And I said, okay, I'll get it back. And so I worked on it and put it on my, you know, my bench and did a couple of my trick things. And it came back and it actually came back to approximately like an eighth of an inch off the board. It was, it was really amazing. The things that God allowed me to do. It was just amazing, man. I was like, I couldn't do that. God had to do that for me. So I appreciate you, Lord. Thank you. All right. So we got it back. Let's look at the base. All right. So first of all, let's look at the, the body of the base. The body of the base, of course, it's been on the water. It said, look. See, it's sort of peeling. So I can live with that. And all the stuff was rustic, so I cleaned everything up. And the base turned out really, really beautiful. I cleaned the whole bridge up. The bridge was on the water. And all that was rusted. And all, all, the, all the adjusters were completely rusted together. It's been on the water for a while. Um, but, you know, all the electronics, I had to change all the electronics and stuff. But anyway, here's the neck. All right. So this is the neck of the base. When I got it, it was looped. See how it looks now? It's very, very straight. Here's the issue. Here is the issue. All right. Although it was straight, it started bending. It was looping from here. When it started looping here, if I don't know if you can see it or not, but see it's breaking right there. All this broken. I had to actually put it on a vise and bend it back down because the whole headstock flipped up because he had the strings on it. And so the headstock started coming toward the string, so it flipped up. If you look at the headstock, it's pretty much leveled down now because I had it under stress. But it's still incorrect. So for, in order for me to fix this, I have to take the whole board off, level the whole neck off, and then put a new board back on it. Or put the same board back on it, but defret it, level that board off, and then level the whole thing again, and then, and then refret it. That's the way to kill it. That's a lot of money. But... You still have your 2012 Fender Jazz. Here's the other issue. So if you call Fender or or get in touch with Fender, they're not answering stuff like they're supposed to. And I don't really think they have this. Here is the scary part about Fender stuff. Okay, so the neck pocket of this base, let's put this down. Fender is very inconsistent with it. Ooh, I almost dropped that. Again, Fender is very inconsistent. I said inconsistent. They are very inconsist inconsistent with their neck pockets. All right? I'm saying this because you guys need to know. All right? And I've been doing this for years. So, all right. So, this neck pocket here is about, I think it's two. I know it's five, listen, it's five eighths deep and it's two and three quarters wide. There is no two and three quarters. 
So basically, it should be, it should be, it should be two and five. It should be two and five eighths. No, this one is, this one. Oh, let me turn the rule around. That one might help. So this one is two and three quarters, right here on the heel. But it's almost two and seven eighths. It's, this is almost two and seven eighths. It fits. It'll fit right in there. Here's the issue. It's a one eighth hangover. That's not good. So if you set the neck inside, let's look down. Check this out. If you set the neck inside the pocket, you got a one eighth hangover. See that? Can you see it? No, move the camera up. You still have a one eighth hangover. See that one eighth hangover? It shouldn't be there. So their necks are very inconsistent. This is a, <laughs> I hate to show you this, but I'm gonna show it to you anyway. All right, let's pull this back up. So, sorry about the hand. Woo. So this is, <laughs> this is damaged. <laughs> That's crazy. So this one is two and three quarters. And you look at it and go like, wow, I should be able to put this one right into that pocket. And I said, and it does not do that. So this one is two and three quarters. Why won't this fit correctly? Because this one is definitely two and three quarters, but it's not. It's it's a little bit almost two and seven eighths. So I I call Warmouth and Warmouth talked to uh, Martin at Warmouth. You guys know Martin. He's a great cat at Warmouth, and he knows his stuff. It says. I talked to him this morning and. Um, he was like, man, I ain't got nothing here that would fit that unless you, you know, tailor made, go back and retail it, your, um, your body or your neck. I can see you something that's wider, but if I see you something wider, you gotta, you gotta retail it. So I took my, my digital caliber and I made sure I was correct on everything that I did. So I recalibrated, I said recalibrated. So I recalibrated the neck again. And I keep coming up with the same thing. On. Look at that. Yep. So all the necks are different. The necks are different. The neck is almost, they almost right, but they off. And, and the, the, the heel, we call it the heel socket. That's way off. So guys, here's the thing that I want to tell you. If you get a Fender Jazz... Um, and if your neck go bad, prayerfully, you can go to a shop and not spend over $700 to get it fixed or $400 to get it fixed. Cause you can buy a brand new neck anywhere between four and 700 bucks. I wanted to say, I'm, I'm going to save this neck. I, not that I wanted to, I'm going to save this neck, but I called Fender and no reply. And I left them a message, no reply. And I sent them an email, no reply. It actually wouldn't even go through. I don't know what's going on with that. But anyway, this is the thing where... Fender, I love you. I, I, I've been loving you for years. But your stuff is inconsistent. And I'm going to say that on live, living live television. And I wish you a lot more consistent because I can get the right necks from you. Because I want to put another neck back on this base. So it'll, it'll be just like this one. You know, I would go with the maple neck if I had it. It don't matter to me. You know, rosewood or maple, don't matter. I just wanted to play. So what I'm going to have to do is, and you can see, look on the back of the neck. I had to take all the, the clear coat off because look at the water damage. See how it looks? And if you look real close, splitting. See the splits? Several splits. Water, that's water. Water would do that. I use water to make it back straight again. All right, remind you, remind you again that this neck was like this. Now look at it. Although it's right, to make it completely right, I had to break the the, uh, the board. And see, the board is broke right there. So I'm gonna have to take this whole board off. No doubt about it. It's gotta it's gotta come off. I have to level the whole neck again, and then replace the board back on it. Well, actually, defret the board and level the board off. And then slam it back on and glue it back on. That's a lot of money and a lot of work, a lot of time. 
All right, so when all I have to do is call and say, hey, I got a bad neck here. Here's the serial number. Can I get another one? I'll buy it. I don't mind. But it won't. It doesn't happen like that. So, guys, with your fender bases, be careful. Be very careful of your necks. Make sure you got, you know, moisture in your in your rooms. Uh, make sure you don't leave it in the car when all the weather changes. Because if your neck go bad, you're done. Walmart can help you, but they can help you in the made in Mexico stuff. They can really help you with that. But the American stuff is cutting different, y'all. It's cutting different. Hate to say it, but it's cutting different. And you're not going to like the results if your neck go bad. So I'm just telling you. Once again, guys, keep praying for the Hobo Depot and the Queen and I. We love y'all too much. Look, not so much, too much. We love y'all too much. And we pray for y'all every morning because that's what's going to make this world better. A lot of things are happening in the world that's not good. But I just pray that you guys stay safe and your family safe. Once again, guys, uh, please subscribe. Please share. Please like. Please visit the Hobo Depot again. Please check out all our videos. And if you like them, join us in our quest to keep this watering hole open. Once again, guys, shout out Kaga. And for my hoodie, my boy right there, he said, shout out Kaga. <laughs> oh, yeah, he... He, he's got that stare right now. He, I don't know what's going on with that. But anyway, guys, shout out, we out of here. Peace.